Hello, hello. Okay, so uh, I just want to talk real briefly about some videos just posted. As I mentioned, I'm going to be doing some videos on uh, you know just random stuff throughout uh, December and and end of November. And I've already done a few clips on. Am I in focus? Am I that better? I don't know. Um, I've already done some clips on some glow effects. Uh, those were quick renders. And I'll be doing actual tutorials on those coming up. They're going to be really short videos, just some very basic glow stuff. But I'm going to do them as if you've watched the uh, quick renders I've done already in both uh, the Blender uh, internal renderer and the Cycles renderer. Both are very easy to do. Uh, I feel like the Cycles one looks a little bit nicer, but one of the reasons you would use the internal versus the cycles renderer is usually it's faster rendering. Uh, so the blender renderer, the internal renderer, uh, I was getting uh, like 25 frames a second for that particular scene. Uh, 25 seconds per frame is what I meant to say. Um, so for one frame at 1080p, it was rendering out about 20 to 25 seconds for each frame. In the Cycles Renderer, it was taking like a minute and a half. So we're looking at five times the length to render it. And so depending on, and that's just the very basic step. I could tweak the Blender Renderer to look more like the Cycles Renderer if I wanted. And maybe I could customize uh, and streamline the rendering for the Cycles to speed up a little bit. Uh, but just the quick, quick rendering that I've done of the two, uh, both of which look good. I get five times the speed of rendering with the internal renderer, which is usually the reason you would use the uh, Blender renderer internal. The thing about the Cycles renderer is when you're rendering stuff, if you want photorealism, if you want to make something true to life and make it look truly real, you probably want to go with the Cycles renderer. It's going to be a bit slower, but it's going to be more accurate to real life. Um, I use the internal renderer mostly because I'm not going for photorealism with most of the stuff I do. Uh, and and I just want quicker renders, especially since I'm not usually doing still, still stuff, I'm doing video stuff, you know, 24 to 30 frames a second. It could take a while if I'm using the Cycles Renderer for a lot of stuff. I am learning more and more with the Cycles Renderer. I still haven't dived into it over the last couple of years just because it's not really designed for what I'm doing. Um, but with this particular thing, I decided to show you both. So that's what they look like compared. And again, uh, and both of them probably could have been tweaked to look better. Even the the, um, the cycles renderer, I could have upped the samples a bit, get a little less um, grain to the the shadows and stuff. But that would have slowed down the rendering even more. So that is it. I just wanted to quickly touch on that. So you saw those examples previously and comparison here. And I'll be doing tutorials on both of those coming up soon. I thank you for watching. And as always, I hope that you have a great day. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description to there. And if you enjoy my videos, my tutorials, be sure to check out my Patreon page. Also link that in the description, patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. There you can become a supporter to support my sites with as little as a dollar a month. And also check out my second channel, which is probably primarily on hardware, and starting in January, I'm actually going to be doing a whole lot of videos on uh, different types of displays and uh, showing them with an Arduino and also using them remotely through a web interface with an ESP8266. So be sure to check out my second channel. There's a link to that in the description as well. And again, at filmsbychris.com, you can search through the videos from both my channels. As always, thank you for watching, and again, I hope that you have a great day.